All right, my dear friends, so we have come to the last experiment, which is experiment 5 of the, this semester. And experiment 5 is going to be called ballistic pendulum. Okay? And as the name says, it's a ballistic pendulum. The aim of the experiment is to study the principles of conservation of energy, conservation of energy, which is the first law of thermodynamics, and to determine the relationship between mass velocity and mechanical energy of a falling body. Okay? So, pay attention here, I have two exclamation marks. These exclamation marks and, of course, this aim, word per word, should be in your report. It means, if we do not see this exclamation mark here, you will get a zero. Again, I will repeat, the aim of the experiment is to study the principles of conservation of energy and to determine the relationship between mass, velocity, and mechanical energy of a falling body. So this is the first thing we ask for for the last week. You should write this aim word per word, including the exclamation marks. Of course, they don't have to be red. You can choose any color you want. Then we go for this diagram. The diagram is the diagram of the experiment, which is this is the free, the, this is the ballistic pendulum. The ball will be fired from here to the pendulum. The pendulum will go to its maximum angle and then go back. You should also have this specific diagram. I don't want any diagrams from Google. I don't want any diagrams gotten from somewhere else. You either take a screenshot of this one or draw it by your hand and take a picture, post it to the report. For the online student, please draw it by your hand and post it. If you don't draw it by your hand or if this diagram is not there, you get also a zero. So I will repeat one more time. The experiment is called ballistic pendulum. The aim is to study the principles of conservation of energy and to determine the relationship between mass, velocity, and mechanical energy of a falling body. Including the exclamation mark, they should be present in your report, as well as the diagram. Exactly the same diagram. You draw it by your hand, you put your name, your student number, this is the diagram. So what are the apparatus we're going to be using? I will show you in a minute what is the apparatus. I'm going to state them just here. The ballistic pendulum apparatus, the angle stick, and a metal ball. Just these three are our apparatus for this experiment. Now, what is the theory behind it? As we know, the kinetic energy is half mv squared, which m is the mass, v is the speed, velocity. And the potential energy is p is equal to mgh. These are the two energies we will be dealing with. So, if you follow the drawings here, you will know what will happen in our experiment. So the ball will be shot from the ballistic apparatus and it will hit, land inside of the pendulum. So before impact, this is what it looks like. The ball is traveling to the pendulum. The ball will go inside the pendulum, it will hit when impact. This is the point of impact. And when it impacts the pendulum, it will the pen push the pendulum up to a certain angle. This certain angle will create a height for us. Moving forward here, as the main drawing, this is the point of impact. At the point of impact, the pendulum has a length of L. When the ball impacts and brings it to the highest point, the maximum point, this is where we don't have any more velocity. All we have here present is the kinetic energy. The height is just when it moves from the point of impact to the maximum. This is our height. How will we calculate the height? So basically here, as I said, we have the length of the pendulum. And here, after the angle is done, we have the height will be L cosine theta. So to get the height, we will do L, the length minus L cosine theta, which is the length at maximum height. And this is what exactly we will study. Now, moving on to our apparatus here, so we can see it clearly. We have the ballistic pendulum apparatus, which is all of this, basically, which is the stand, you just have to write the ballistic apparatus. Yes, ballistic pendulum apparatus. This inside of this, this is, there's a piston here, and there is, as we there is as we studied before, a spring. So for the working mechanism of this one, what happens is we have three ranges. We have the short range, 
here we have the medium range and we have the long range so we have these ranges now I'm putting it at the long range just to show you what happens you put it at the range then you put the metallic ball inside okay then this is our as I said our pendulum and this is our angle stick the angle stick has a hook here which connects to the pendulum at the point of firing this one what happens so as you see here this piston has inside of this one it has a let me just go get it has a spring like this but thicker it's made from thick material so what will happen is this piston which the spring is on it has at the end a tip here which will contract the spring and when we press this spring look what happens it springs which gives force to the ball to go inside the pendulum it impacts the pendulum and it goes to the maximum height as we will see now here so it goes see it impacted the pendulum the pendulum goes to this maximum height at this angle to see the angle huh? this is the angle stick we just press it down it's 51 this is your angle the angle is 51 okay so we did this for the short range which is this one again we put the short range we put the ball here we put the ball we close this and we turn it on we press impacts we did this for the short range for the medium and for the long range and we go now back to our table we did short range medium range long range five times why did we do that for better accuracy each time we put we pull we put the ball we release it gives the maximum angle so for short range one two three four five medium range five long range five we did the average of these five for each range now what you guys will be doing is that of course this table should be exactly the same in everyone exactly the same numbers exactly the same average if you don't have exactly this you will get a zero we should have exactly this table now it's up to you guys after that to do your calculations what will we calculate we said at the maximum height we just have potential energy so at the maximum height here we have mgh half mgh or mgh sorry have mgh here so we know the mass of the ball it's given here 43.5 grams the mass of the pendulum and the ball is 213.5 grams g is 9.8 and the length is 0 0.225 meters in case you don't see i set them so you can stop go back again in the video and record them in your hand so because we said at that point at maximum point we have conservation of energy which means at maximum point kinetic energy will be equal to potential energy so that's why half mv squared is equal to mgh the m will cancel out you'll have v squared is equal to 2gh so v2 is square root of 2gh and as we know h is l minus l cosine theta and that is where your calculations will start you will take v2 what is v2 v2 is the speed of the ball and the pendulum together so the speed of this one here at this point it's going to be equal to square root of 2 g l minus l cosine theta which theta you will use you will use this theta after that you will use this one and this one which means you will have three v2s from the v2 you're going to calculate the kinetic energy one this is the kinetic energy of the ball and the pendulum together that's why here it's half big m big m as we see upstairs is the mass of the pendulum plus the ball so big m v2 squared then we take the one which should be the mass of the, the speed of the ball it's big m over small m times v2 from this we shall calculate the kinetic energy 2 which is the kinetic energy of the ball which is half mv1 squared so you're responsible for these calculations for this report you will take first theta 1 is equal to 9.6 degrees 
you will take the theta 1, you put it in this. So you will get the V2. You take this V2, you put it in here. You get a key E. You put it here, you get a V1. You put it here, you get a key 2. Then, you take the second theta, 30.4. You put it here, which will give you this, this, and this, which are different. And then you took, take your third theta, and also you put it here, which will give you a different value. So this is what we expect from you as regards to your calculations. After that, you would move on to a graph. I want the graph to be V2 versus Ke1. So the V2, which is this one, and the kinetic energy one, which is this one. And please, your graph should be written on a paper. No Excel, no nothing. A paper with your name and student number on it. And that's it for this week. Please be careful, I will repeat one more time. This should be word for word exactly, with the exclamation mark. The diagram should be the same as this one. No Google, no whatever, from this one. The apparatus should be these three. Equations, in the equation part you put this equation, this equation and this one. When you're calculating, you will use these four to calculate. Good luck in your final experiment. And for next week, there will be our makeup. It means next week we will open a link where you can upload the reports that you didn't do. So it means for my online students, we will open the link, you will rewatch the videos of the experiments you didn't do, you do the reports and you attach them on that link. And that's it for this week. After this week, the week after will be our final exam. Good luck.